Welcome to the Writer's Den. My name is Jane Waters Thomas, and with us today is an amazing journalist and writer. Her name is Merlisa Lawrence Corbett. Welcome. Thank you. We're glad so to glad be here. here. Great, great. Merlisa, you've written for some really interesting magazines, Sports Illustrated, um, Black Essence, and, and at this point, you write some really cool stuff. Tell us a little bit about um, the magazines that you've written for in the past and what some of your projects look like in, in, in today. Okay. Um, yes, I, I actually started in newspapers. Uh, my first paid uh, gig was at the local Lakeland Ledger when I was in college at USF. And I went on from there to the uh, Tampa Tribune. Then I moved to New York, uh, Pittsburgh Press, and then I got a call one day from Sports Illustrated. Um, so I moved to New York, uh, was working with Sports Illustrated, and quickly learned that when you're at SI, you're not just at SI, you're part of the whole Time, Inc. family. And in that building at uh, Rockefeller Center, <laughs> um, there's all kind of publications, and so you get exposed to a wide variety uh, of things, Martha Stewart Living's there, Entertainment Weekly, of course, uh, they no longer have life, but they had Time Magazine, you have Fortune, Money Magazine, so there's a chance to get exposed to a lot of different uh, publications, and they also, of course, at the time, Time Warner owned HBO and everything, so, you know, I had a lot of exposure, and it kind of broadened my horizons, and, uh, and then I, you know, after getting married, starting a family, I went into freelancing because it's hard to be traveling with sports, but now I've come full circle and I'm a tennis columnist for Bleacher Report, which is uh, CNN.com's um, default sports section. It used to be Sports Illustrated, but they purchased Bleacher Report, and so now when you click on sports on CNN.com's, it goes to Bleacher Report, and uh, I'm mostly doing tennis now. So when you are a sports journalist, I would have to believe that like the dream is everything you just mentioned. <laughs> yes and no. I think sometimes people glamorize it, particularly the part about going into the locker rooms. Um, they think that uh, being a female sports writer is all about locker rooms, but it's really only an issue for NFL locker rooms because they're so massive, there's so many people on the teams, um, and it smells, it's not fun. <laughs> it smells so bad. Um, <laughs> you met a bunch of sweaty men after a game, and I told people it is not pretty. Right. And uh, so, um, but for the most part, athletes are brought out into a press conference. Um, so like if you're doing Major League Baseball, they're mostly in the clubhouse, they're playing cards, they're kind of relaxed, nobody's naked. So uh, it's really, and in college, they kind of bring the athletes out to you, it's only really an issue um, in the NFL. So the most of it is just working, calling people, a lot of leg work. The glamorous part is the finished product, but there's a ton of work behind the scenes before you actually get your article published. So you're, you're sitting at your desk one day and SI calls and says, hey, we want to interview you? No, it was uh, better than that. It, in fact, in the early 90s, uh, there were very few, people are so used to female sports writers now, but in the early 90s, there weren't um, as many. And then for black female sports writers who covered major sports, there might have been fewer than 10 in the country. And so I was at the Pittsburgh Press, which is a great sports paper. Uh, the paper's no longer there. They fold. You know, a lot of papers have folded since then. But it was a great sports town. Um, but I was getting interviewed. Uh, I had been offered a job at the Milwaukee Journal to cover uh, college basketball. I was being flown all over the place. But I picked up the phone, I was in my um, apartment, and somebody on the other end said, how would you like to write for Sports Illustrated? I never apply, which drives a lot of my male friends crazy. Cause Did you dance around? <laughs> I hope you danced well, around. Well, I was like, you know, <laughs> it was one of those things where I wasn't planning to move right then, because there was like a natural progression. You go from, I went the route of smaller paper, going to larger mm -hmm. paper, you know, trying to move up that way and uh, never even thought about magazines. I was a dedicated newspaper person. I even wrote uh, for the Tampa Tribune covering when they had a Polk County Bureau covering high school games, driving around Polk County going to games. Um, so I thought I'd just be doing newspapers, but when they called, you kind of say, well, you know, I'll check it out, right. you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, but it changed the whole, not just the way I thought about my career, but writing in general. I 
thought Sports Illustrated was just another sports publication, but it was more of a literary magazine, so the long form writing that they did mm -hmm. really did change the way I looked at sports writing. That's very exciting, and so I guess, you know, inspiration for writing comes from a million different places for everyone, <laughs> and, and I'm hearing sports all the way through your career. Were you an athlete? Somewhat. Um, I, my father and my brothers were really into sports, and uh, I grew up in a large um, family, um, born and raised in Winter Haven, um, and my dad would leave the sports section out, but in terms of playing sports, my mom was very traditional. We were raised Pentecostal and girls shouldn't be out That's there. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but I was athletic, but you know, she'd rather I be in the band as the color guard or something, not uh, doing sports. I know it seems crazy now um, because now I play tennis. I'm like, had I just started this earlier, I, I might have been a pro. <laughs> right. You know, I'm actually pretty good at this. Um, but, uh, you know, she was like, you know, girls shouldn't be out there doing that. So, I liked sports, but I didn't think about it until I was a junior in college, and you kind of have to declare a major. And so I was thinking, well, what am I good at? And I had always aced English and loved to write, and I love sports, and literally that's how I thought of it. I was like, okay, a sports writer. And then once I did it, it was like, this is a natural, you know. Um, I did have professors who tried to steer me into public affairs reporting. Um, you know, will you stop writing these sports stories? And uh, uh, so I'm glad I didn't listen to them. Yeah. So were were people like Gail Sarens from Tampa influential to you at all? No, because that's broadcasting, and broadcasting is so different from print. And traditionally, uh, maybe 20, 30 years ago, most broadcasters started in print, but not these days. I mean, they're like made for TV ready. Um, and it's a totally different genre. You're all great communicators. Um, I remember when she, you know, uh, got her big break and everything, and I'm shocked that she's still going on. <laughs> but uh, uh, but um, no, she wasn't a big inspiration because it's, it's a different genre. There were very few. Uh, there was a um, Claire Smith who has, um, she's now with ESPN, but she was at the New York Times at the time. And she had covered every uh, World Series since, I think, 1971. So people don't know her, but I knew of her. So those kind of people so inspired that was your inspiration. me. Yeah. That's outstanding. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're in college and you go, I'm going to write because I like to write. And I yeah. love sports. And here we go. And, yeah. and then you land in some of the most amazing publications. Yeah. Um, what was it like for you as a writer? The first time Sports Illustrated comes out, and there you are. It um, didn't really work like that. When you start at Sports Illustrated, they start you as a reporter, and um, and the reporters are almost like the farm system for the senior writers. So they make you wait like a year before your name's on the masthead, and it's like a big thing. They come to you and ask you how would you like to be listed? And I remember them asking me, and I said, can I just have Merlisa and put in parentheses, you know, like Oprah? They said no. <laughs> and uh, so, um, <laughs> so awesome. then I just did Merlisa Lawrence. Uh, but, you know, I had put uh, my byline in there before that, and that was a big deal. And I had old editors, teachers, people calling me when they saw my name in there. Uh, it was really something. It, it's like it didn't hit me how national it was until I had old co-workers and stuff calling me because I'd, I'd done a column where they had my picture in there too, mm -hmm. and so I got calls from all over, you know, telling me they saw the article. So what'd your dad think? He was, you know, my dad was a quiet type, and it's funny he uh, passed away in 2002. And I remember after he died, we were collecting some of his stuff, and, he, and I saw this huge f scrapbook where he had kept every article, even little local high school covers. I just, you know, he would, you he knew he it. was proud, but I didn't know he had a scrapbook with everything I'd ever written. And so that's when I was like, wow. And you know, and if you talk about inspiration, he was really into sports. You know, he was like a walking baseball encyclopedia. Well, you know, and I didn't ask that about inspiration with, with your father. You mentioned it right in the very beginning of our discussion <laughs> about how involved your family was in sports and, mm -hmm. and um, like a good traditional Pentecostal family. You're allowed to do dance and some cool things like that that look like <laughs> girl stuff, you know. Um, 
But I would think that this is your contribution to your family, too, <laughs> from the sports side of things. Well, it's funny because um, now all of us are into sports. I have uh, three sisters who also, they watch. I mean, I'm the only person who pursued it as a career. And like I said, we always had the, the games on. My dad would always, that was kind of his routine before going to work to leave the sports page. Uh, behind after he cooked some horrendous breakfast. He wasn't a good cook, but he tried. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> That's right. in fact, he'd wake up at five, cook breakfast. It would be so awful that <laughs> my mom would trash it, cook a whole nother breakfast. And I think he went to his grave thinking we were eating his food. That's it was great. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> so are you a cook? <laughs> yeah, I cook really well. My dad was just, I don't know, must be so he was in the military in the Korean War and I'm wondering if it was some old military stuff. It was just so funny. it was just horrible. That's so <laughs> so. funny. So so you've written, um, you've really started, you've done some really cool things, newspaper, um, sports seems to be where you, you're really strong. Today mm -hmm. you are writing about tennis, mm -hmm. you're playing a little tennis. Mm -hmm. um, what does today look like for you as a writer and an author? Well, it's changed a lot. It's still print, you're still writing, but most of my clients, because now I'm an independent contractor, um, are online. Um, I rarely see my name in print, print. Um, I do a lot of stuff for uh, interior design. That's a uh, I know it seems weird with sports, but I'm really into interior design. So a lot of my clients are either design magazines or HGTV.com. I write for them. Um, and uh, the Bleacher Report, I do tennis commentary for them as a featured columnist. And uh, that's a lot of fun because I do play tennis. And so being able to write about it, you know, write about the personalities and then be able to play it, you know, I kind of appreciate it from a, a different angle. But today as a writer, it's really about um, learning how to write for the web. It, it's, it's a little different. And a lot of my colleagues, friends who've been in the business for years, are um, going through the, you know, whether they were getting laid off or whatever, adjusting to this whole new online world. Uh, but for me, I tell them talent is timeless. So you just learn a few tools, search engine optimization and how to incorporate that in your writing. So it's still, you still have to work on your craft. You're still writing, it's just a different audience. Now you are working currently on a couple of special projects mm -hmm. and a memoir. I'm working on a memoir and then two books. The memoir, I'm gonna have to go the traditional route, I think, and to get it published with the agent and the publishers, and that's changed a lot. But the two other ones are gonna be some fun things that I'm gonna, um, well, not self-publish, but go through um, as e-books, yeah. And that is definitely the, the current trend, mm -hmm. is, is to put it out there on the web and, and, and we're build all your reading. Audience. We're reading on cell phones yeah. at this point. People are just gobbling up yeah. you know, content. And that's why I call myself a content provider, because it's not just about writing anymore. You're providing content to people. Well, you know, and, and you have such a variety of things that you're writing about at this point. Um, how easy is it to go from interior design to sports to tennis? And, and it sounds like you're doing a lot of things extremely well, clearly. <laughs> but, but how do you take off that one hat and put the other hat on as a writer? They're actually not different hats. It's like um, I, when I was in school, I was into design. I even was in a at Garner Elementary in Winter Haven in a gifted program, and um, I've always liked design. So to me, um, it was harder to sell it to people that I'm doing both things when I present myself as a writer. But it's who I am. I I love everything from a well-designed coffee cup. Um, I'm it's. If it's well designed, I'm into it. I'm really into architecture. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I'm taking off a hat because the same person who loves tennis or is so happy the Miami Dolphins are back on track. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the same person who, who loves fine linen. Um, it's, it's me, it's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And I don't try to explain it. It's like, yeah, I, I want to decorate, you know, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is a nice setting here. You know, I check out everything so I don't even feel like I'm changing hats. Yeah well we know that the world's greatest collectors of art are also the owners of football teams mm -hmm. so it makes a lot of sense to me Absolutely, that, that those two things work well for you. Mm -hmm. So you have any special projects that you you have kind of in the back of your mind you go oh, one day I want to do that and it's a little different than what I've done. Um, 
one of them is, is uh, kind of an offshoot of growing up here in Polk County. Uh, one of the projects, and I've talked to some friends about it, was uh, something called Bubba's and Brothers. And it's kind of like the correlation and the similarities similarities between hip hop and NASCAR culture. And having grown up in Florida, <laughs> you know, where my <laughs> brothers had a Buddy Baker um, lampshade, um, <laughs> you know, I tell people, I was like, you know, they think they're worlds apart, but there's so so many similarities between what I call the, the brothers and uh, Bubba's. That <laughs> so, is outstanding. Because they, they always have two names, Billy Bob or T.I. Uh-huh. You know? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, you and know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody. They love good cooking, yeah. fried food, nice cars. I you kind know? of want to see an event called that now, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so that's, that's one that I, I, I can't wait to do is the Bubba's and Brothers. Yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Yeah. So. Dad was an influence. You definitely have followed some strong ladies um, um, down the path of writing. Um, what do you hope your footprint will be as a writer? Um, that I got to the point. Um, in my writing, I really try to be authentic. And, you know, it can rub people the wrong way, particularly when you talk about sports. People are very passionate about sports. I, when I was at the Staten Island paper, a guy actually walked into the newsroom screaming, leave Billy Martin alone, and we thought he might shoot us. And uh, and it's like, you know, I've gotten death threats. You're not a good sports columnist until you've gotten death threats. Right. So um, I just hope that people, when they read my writing, it's, it's authentic, it's me. Um, you know, influenced by a lot of people, but it's it's me, and so I'm not trying to win over fans or Twitter followers. You know, I just want you to know it's authentic. This is this is how I really feel, and I even go to bat with editors if they try to tell me what I think. And uh, that never and it's happens like <laughs> ever. <laughs> and so um, no, it's it's important to me that they know that that's really what she thought. You yeah. know, and not someone else's other opinion. Well, and that's what makes you a terrific writer, clearly. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, when you're, when you're sought to write for major publications, mm -hmm. what you're doing is the right thing. Yes. Um, if you were to say any couple of pieces of advice to the new generation of writers who will never really know <laughs> what it is to hold on to a hard copy piece of anything, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, true. What, what would your words of wisdom be to our young writers who their passion, their dreams are, are five years away from them? To one, keep writing, work on your craft, um, pursue perfecting your craft more than being famous. Um, I'm sure you can get more followers if you do something outrageous or stupid on YouTube. Uh, but in the end, it's your writing that's going to last. You know, I, I love music, and I think of on my way over here, I was listening to the Eagles Hotel California. I'm like, that's never <laughs> going out of style. You know, it's <laughs> right. like, it's just, you know, some right. of the stuff that's on the radio is like five minutes from now. Mm -hmm. It's over. But, you know, Hotel California, Stevie Wonder, that's never going out of style. And, and I can listen to some music today, and I can tell if it's going to be around. And, uh, and some stuff, you know, just doesn't tend, you know, stand the test of time. But authenticity lingers forever. So I would tell young writers, be authentic, uh, write as often as you can, um, seek improvement, not followers. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, all the likes. You just don't need that many likes. You don't. You know, and they don't like you anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. Darn it. Darn it. Okay, that's good advice for sure. Well, Marlisa, I appreciate that you came out and talked to us. You're just a lot of fun to speak oh, with. And thank you. What a fun career you've had. Um, we look forward to seeing your memoir and your projects that are upcoming. And I guess we'll be looking for you on a tennis court in Winter Haven from time Absolutely. to time. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us on The Writer's Den. We will see you next time.